Australians love their hairy chested, affordable, high performance sedans, and they don't get a whole lot more hairy chested than the SS Commodore. Meet the latest iteration of what is becoming a classic. This one is the VF, the successor to the VE Commodore. As with the rest of the VF Commodore range, there's a new look front and rear, as well as an aluminium bonnet and boot lid designed to reduce the weight. More on that in a minute. But there's still enough of that leery look to let everyone else know that your Commodore is a bit faster than the neighbours, and it's capped off by a set of quad exhaust pipes. Today I'm down at the Holden Proving Ground, south of Melbourne, to give the SS a thorough workout. The whole SS formula hasn't changed one bit. Big stonking 6 litre V8, plenty of grunt, obviously in a big Commodore body. The 6 litre V8 is unchanged, so as a manual makes 270 kilowatts of power, or 260 when hooked up to the 6 speed auto that I'm playing with today. So while the V8 itself isn't changed, the car is, all because it's that little bit lighter, so Holden reckons against the stopwatch, this car will go a fraction quicker. And of course, being a V8, and rear wheel drive if you want to. You can have a bit of fun. As well as feeling a lot more upmarket inside, it feels a lot more mature to drive. For a big heavy car that will comfortably suit as a family sedan, the SS is a pretty impressive bit of kit. Plenty of grunt and amazingly capable through the bends. Now one thing with the VF is the steering has changed from hydraulic to electric and they've also moved away from the variable ratio so now tip it in the same level of steering response no matter where you are within the wheel turning movement. So it's still not one of the sharpest cars when it comes to initial steering response but it doesn't shy away from a corner. The SS is also really well controlled over bumps so yes it grips through the corners but throw it at a few bumpy bits and it sits down pretty well reasonably comfortable and also recovers really quickly so second grade Aussie roads not a problem. Holden's also done a fair bit of work with the brakes so stomp on them. Still pulls up pretty hard but it's the feel of the brakes in everyday driving and just driving around gently that's when they feel a little bit sharper. Gives you another chance to give that V8 a bit of a footfall as well. Holden's made little tweaks throughout the car and they all add up to tiny differences. It still looks and feels like a Commodore, but a little bit differently. So the steering wheel, for example, bigger, chunkier grip. Even the throttle pedal, you've actually got to push it a little bit further, so it's a, a bit of a longer throw, which in a car like this maybe isn't quite as ideal. And one other tiny thing, aluminium bonnet. There's a lot more aluminium components on this car, all about reducing weight. And I just tend to notice it flopping around a little bit more over those shorter, sharper bumps. Now, of course, part of the whole SS formula is looking a little bit leery on the outside. Inside, too, there's hints of that, although really it's a bit more classy these days. A faux carbon fibre look, um, some different materials, sort of a leather look on the, uh, on the dash, so it all looks fairly upmarket, but still with just enough little red touches and uh, other bits and bobs to make it stand out. One of my favourites are the seats. Decent support, they're not race seats by any stretch, but they are pretty supportive, and a really nice sort of suede finish on them, so um, pretty upmarket. And that pretty much sums up the new VF version of the Commodore SS. It's not a game changer, or even a change of direction, but it's matured an already successful formula with a new look and better driving attributes. Importantly, it still brings phenomenal V8 bang for your buck, all for about $45,000.